Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, February 11th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast has been determined length episode number 729. And we're talking about Singles Awareness Week. <laughs> As you could tell, day. we got two people here with pink backgrounds, <laughs> but I have a black background like my heart. <laughs> Gary. Yes. What are we talking about? <laughs> I was not expecting that intro. And now in hindsight, I don't know what I was thinking I was going to get because that just seemed. I mean, do you ever un- know what I'm going to give you for the intro? No, I don't. But then after I've reflected on it, I was like, well, that's pretty spot on. <laughs> so it's a let's talk about show. And yes. Um, by the time, uh, people are listening and are watching this, if you're not catching it live, happy VD. <laughs> As I like That's to say, it works all the time. kind of weird coming from the person who works in the <laughs> <laughs> in, in STI and HIV public health. Hell yeah. I, yeah, I think it's funny yeah. as hell. I love walking around saying that. <laughs> But but it's a but venereal disease is an old term now. Like mm-hmm. nobody ever says it anymore, so people don't know what VD is. <laughs> so, in the workplace, people get a chuckle because most of us like well, have a medical, you know, affiliation. Here, here's here's another thing is, and no no when you you said it you said STI right, but people because that is to the say, newer term because per, because even after VD. They used to say STD. Correct. Mm-hmm. And so disease is the state you get after the infection. And so the CDC, the medical community has pivoted, I think, in the past decade to wanting to call it STIs because they are technically infections. Um, and some people debate whether or not you're in a disease state when you're infected. I'm not going to get into the semantics of it, but. Um, so at work, I made a crack about two years ago and I was like, how about we just call them STIDs? <laughs> it didn't really take, um, so <laughs> anyways, so yes, Valentine's day is coming up. Um, and I was thinking about this. I was like, we've, been, we've been kind of talked about this in a little while. So I, I called it the love bug because we're not I talking was... about a Volkswagen Beetle, by the way. <laughs> just say do you know so this morning as i'm like preparing the document i like go online and i was like surely this is a thing and do you know that the internet searches like nope there was a movie a really good movie honestly a fun movie made back in the 1960s called the love bug it's a, it's a classic walt disney film mm-hmm. about a little vw bug beetle that's like kind of has its own personality and possession it's love. Yeah, it's not like um, Christine, the movie, like the book from Stephen King. This is different. Anyways, uh, it was a whole series of things. And it was big when we were probably kids, because if you were lucky, you got to watch it. Oh, there like, were sequels. As a school, like, you know, 
kind of activity or whatever. And then there was another one made apparently back in 97, mm-hmm. like a reboot or something. I don't know. Oh, um, with, is that the one with Lindsay Lohan? Maybe. Oh, uh, um, and there was Herbie fully loaded in 2005. No, the 97 one is on Bruce Campbell, John Hanna, Alexander Wentworth, Kevin. Yeah, J. I, O'Connor, I, I, I was just Dana doing Cole a search, search in, in my auto complete. The, the second one was about the 2005 one. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, anyway. the point is, is we're not talking about the, the VW bug. <laughs> But I was like, surely this is a thing. Like, I know I've heard of the love bug, right? Like, yeah. it's not just the little, like, movie or something. So it took me a long time to bug. find. The love bug, Herbie rides again. Herbie goes to Monte Carlo. Herbie goes bananas. Then the reboot in 97, the love bug. And then in 2005, Herbie fully loaded. And Herbie fully loaded sounds like something completely different in the modern age. Um <laughs> Just saying. Speaking of fully loaded, let's talk about love bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a, a kind of an older reference, and it's actually very geographical. I didn't know that that there is such a reference to a thing called a love bug. Hmm. Um, it's actually apparently something called a march fly, hmm. um, and they're typically found in subtropical regions of the U.S., like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, and they actually don't bite people, but the reason that they got the nickname, the love bug is because they have two breeding seasons in May and in September and exhibit all the symptoms apparently of being madly in love. Um, and once they mate, they stay physically connected for days, um, and can even be seen flying like, well, like physically connected to each other. Yes. Um, and so the clingy behavior is what earned them the nickname love bugs so there is there is some type of connotation and what i was thinking about is like do we have do, i'm presuming a lot here do we have romantic sides to us and are there like things that we appreciate as gestures or actions behaviors feelings whatever uh, you know when it comes to love um because i feel like you know that that uh we've kind of gone on about this before you know capitalism tells us <laughs> you should buy cards flowers candies and those are all the things that are like, you know, high priced for this week. Please don't. What? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> don't what? Don't buy them? <laughs> okay, so I have opinions on cards. <laughs> I hate yeah. cards. Just like I, I, I appreciate the sentiment behind the cards and I appreciate the fact that uh, my mom worked at a card store for years, so we made money from people buying cards. But <laughs> okay, when I receive cards, do you know what happens to that card? I look at it, go "aw," and I throw it in the trash. Okay, that seems kind of pointless to me. They paid. For you to have an emotional response. For two seconds. I, All right. I, I don't think it was worth the money. <laughs> well, I mean, but that's but that's the thing, though, is like not everyone gets the same, uh, I guess, response or feeling or whatever from the stuff. Like some people are very much like... Um, I don't want to get back into this all over again about the whole, like, uh, damn it. We did the episode with Ed about this. Lovely the images. thing. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But to, to kind of borrow from that, some people love gifts. Some people like, um, gestures, like things done on their behalf or for them. 
and other people just like um, quality time Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be a specific thing. So I was just kind of wondering, like, do we have preferences in terms of that, you know, when it comes to like thinking of it from a romantic, you know, view in terms of love, if you're sharing your life with someone or someone is being amorous with you and they're interested in you, like, is there things that we prefer? I'm a touchy person. I was wondering what you were doing, Jeff. I was like, I was like, is he gesturing away? I don't want to have part of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. But no, you're a touchy person. Uh, uh, a touchy. I'm, I'm a touchy feely. I like affection. Okay. Um. I appreciate gifts, but I don't want necessarily gifts that will give me uh, it it needs to give me enjoyment from something more than just like a card you know it needs to be Mm -hmm. something I can use in some way and when I say use in some way some of that could be putting in my mouth (laughs) so if you give me food okay you know, uh, as a gift, I appreciate that. Fair. Currently, though, I have specifications right now because of certain situations. Right. I'm very picky about that. So when you send me cookies, which are not really conducive to me at the moment, and I told you originally... Uh-oh. Don't send me cookies. Oh. And you do anyway. Do you know how that makes me feel? Like that does not make me happy and, and <laughs> feel loved. It makes me feel ignored and annoyed. Oh. I, I mean... tell you, go. And you say, I'm going to send them anyway. Take them to work or something like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean truth. That is very true. And I mean and you're kind of hitting a really good point. Because Jeff. that also brings into yeah. another thing is it, what makes me feel love is I feel listened to. That part. Mm. Uh, that you understand this is my my wants and needs. I'm asking you to not make an effort for something. This saves you something. Right. Right? So it's a, it's a, here, here, but you do it anyways. And, and does it make me feel happy when I told you, please don't. And I say, please don't. I'm not saying don't do it. Whatever you do, don't do it. I'm asking you nicely, please don't, but you do it anyways. Yes. Which makes me feel like I need to text my mom and say, please just don't come see me because all you do is make me angry. Oh. Well, I mean, like you said, like I said, you were hitting you're hitting a very good point where which is like um part of love and what have you is being listened to and respected. You know what I mean? Like having you expressed specifically something that you did not want and you were ignored. And that's kind of not very loving, you know, and, especially and, and when her intent is, oh, I'm going to give you some cookies because I'd like giving you cookies. And but then yeah. it's that's just you feeling good. It's not yeah. me feeling good. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm bringing this all down. It's the black. No, 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 no. Background. <laughs> going, going. <laughs> if I go back. So if we were, if we go back to because um, Gary brought up the. Um, landscape of relationships, which was episode six thirty six, um, landscape of relationships, love languages. Um, I actually remembered that we actually had we t- all took the test and we all had the results. And Gary and Jeff and Ed were all um, physical touch. Yeah, it's interesting because when when Jeff just now was talking about like being all about touch. And I was like, well, 
And then when he was talking about getting a gift and like how he got something that he didn't necessarily want. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, I really resonate with that. Like Uh if someone wants to do something for me, I feel, I feel a certain way because I've, you know, dated in the past and people have, you know, you're in that phase and you're getting to know each other and they want to do something nice for you. And it's a struggle for me because I'm such a fucking control freak. And like <laughs> it is. I'm gonna own it. Like they're in my house and like they want to make a meal. And I'm like, uh, like <laughs> you don't know where you don't know where everything is. Right. They don't, don't know, know where things are. Like they have to learn like to navigate my space. And like I remember when I was dating someone, they made a whole meal and they were so proud of themselves because they wanted to make a whole meal. But then like three times in the midst of doing things, they had to ask me where stuff was or if I had things because they just didn't know, you know, and then it makes me wonder because in my in my head, I'm like, well, my kitchen is set up in a way that functionally makes sense. So if you can't find things or figure it out, then what does it say? Anyways. So I know I struggle with like people being nice to me in general, let alone like amorous and like doing something for me. Which is the opposite of me, because my love language was acts of service. My main one, I should say, was acts of service. I like right. it when people do things for me. It helps me, if it, especially if it helps me. Um, right. I also enjoy like spending time with people, um, which uh yeah you know and and that's sort of um very weird like like you know it's not necessarily um you have to do it it's they want to do it i think that's the main difference for me true um making the plans doing things because as a person who always has to do it it feels weird to always have to do it and yeah so well and, and i guess I, I i look at it from this perspective if if someone wants to express their love for a person what i would hope is that what they do comes naturally to them mm-hmm. not exactly. that they feel obligated to do that so for example jeff and your cookies is a perfect example like while your I'm, you said mom while you're mom wanted to do the, do this for you it was not something that you wanted to and you expressed specifically that you didn't want it mm-hmm. her denying that expression is a um like you said it's not really a love situation this is a a i did it because i wanted to meaning your mom like mm-hmm. i she did it because she wanted to she didn't do it because um, it would make you happy or, oh, it, you know, it'd be a nice little surprise or, oh, um, um, he'll, he'll, he'll take it anyway because, you know, whatever. It was. Well, I had to take she it. Wanted she to make sent it, it, sent it in a box well, by, yeah. by mail. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could, you could be a real bitch and like, and there were video, some things in in trash. that I did, <laughs> did like. It was, the, yeah. One yeah. is just I the cookies. I said, just I can't eat the cookies right now. If mm-hmm. honestly, if I could eat the co- eat cookie, well, n- honestly, nowadays I'm not much of a cookie person anymore. That's fair. It's I mean, like occasionally I will, but yeah, I've had at times when I didn't have the current issue. Um, she would send me cookies, and I would just not eat them. I, I, You're just, just because I didn't feel like eating cookies. Right. You are not a cookie person. You're like if if you wanted a dessert, you would want something else. Even before all this went down, you would prefer not to have a cookie, and you probably expressed that to your mother. And no, said, no, I no. Don't like Previously, cookies. I'm like she's gonna send me cookies. And I'm like ooh cookies, and I just yeah. And then then that medium. So then that time I appreciate it. But yeah, you know, recently because certain circumstances changed, and I'm like look. I can't even eat the cookies or it's not comfortable to eat the cookies. I don't want to try to figure out how to eat the cookies. Please just don't send me cookies. And she yeah. sends me cookies anyways. 
Yeah. Wait. I think the key thing in this situation that we're Slightly describing though situation. is that I think is that Jeff told them that he didn't want the cookies and they still mm-hmm. sent them as opposed to just sending them as an act of love. Mm-hmm. Like, cause then it's like, Oh, that was nice of them to do that. They didn't have to, I kind of didn't want them, but they did it. Well, and then and she this keeps is a little different type of cookies. I like because she sent me some of the, these uh, chocolate <laughs> crackles that she makes, which I don't like. <laughs> Oh no, it gets worse. <laughs> it's it's just like rabbit oh. hole. I really think I, I really think we need to like have some sort of reference book from my mom uh, about our likes and wants because honestly, Jeff. Eh, 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 eh. I love this idea of you and your siblings, like the family, creating like a visual book and being like, "This is our gift to you. This is how much we love you." Is we want you to understand we the love you between us. You by by helping you by providing right. you with the reference tool that you want to send us these things to make us happy. Right. <laughs> and here's how you can make us happy. Here send is a list of things. our preferences. Right. Do not send these things. You, you I think send that's these totally things. fair. And and it really is. It's like a cyclical version uh, uh, of uh, 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 of love, right? We love you en- enough that when you want to show us that you love us by sending us some some cookies or snacks or something, you have a reference tool to find the time that we like. Because you know what's the best thing to do is send something that people like. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you can do that with an Amazon wish list. Not, <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. I Except just, you, you know, like when, when you're trying to bake cookies, an Amazon wish list doesn't really help on that, though. You can find cookies that are already baked. But that's, that's what's not true. Fun. You could get David's cookies anyways. But when it's something Any- that's not available in a store in some other form, because yeah. you could say, like, like, Oatmeal raisin cookies. I know some people don't like oat, like raisins in their oatmeal cookies. I don't understand you, but you know that's your that's your preference. <laughs> Wait, somewhere like down here, Gary. Um, I can't see you, David. So I don't know what you're even doing. <laughs> it's okay. And uh, <laughs> trying to point at you. Well, because the reason why I'm laughing is because this just happened at work this past week. <laughs> we So at work, we had a Super Bowl. So S-O-U-P-E-R Bowl. And it was a potluck kind of function at work. And people were encouraged to bring make a soup or a chili, something along those lines. And originally, it was all supposed to be soups. And then like the person organizing it kind of panicked because only two people signed up and they were like, this is a disaster. So they were like, you know, other things are welcome. So then there was like relish trays and, you know, like, you know, cheese and, and meat type tray thing. And, you know, a bunch. And actually there ended up being like eight crock pot type soup chili things. And I actually made one. I didn't win, <clears throat> which is fine. But someone had made cookies. And one of the supervisors said, oh, what kind of cookies are those? And so I turned the container so you could see the label, the post-it note. And the supervisor looks and goes, oh. <laughs> and I nearly peed myself with laughter. And then they caught themselves because they were embarrassed that it was out loud. They didn't realize that they had verbalized their disappointment. <laughs> and I said, it's okay. I've been there. And then one of the other supervisors starts laughing across the room just a couple feet away. And I was like, nope, see, the three of us, we know, we understand. And I start doing this bit. And I was like, if you have ever been traumatized by reaching for a cookie that you think is chocolate chip and it's freaking oatmeal raisin, I was like, you never forget. And you are just not trusting anymore for the rest of your life. And people are like listening to this like diatribe that I'm going on and the two supervisors are nearly peeing themselves and like other people were kind of laughing and they were like, wow, you're really passionate about this. And I was like, yes, I was like, cause there is nothing worse in the world than having an expectation and then getting something completely different than it, like out of that moment. And so anyways, that's why I was started laughing when you guys started talking about oatmeal cooking. I was like, yes. I'm like, that totally happened this week. I mean, I, I read the label and I was like, okay, nope. <laughs> like, like and, and the thing was, God bless them. It was oatmeal raisin, walnut something something it was like it was like six things and i was like 
first of all, God bless you. Um, <laughs> I don't like nuts in my cookies either. Yes. So, <sighs> Gary, Jeff, you were saying. But I'm sorry. Like, like you, uh, like let's say, like chocolate ch standards, chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin, that sort of thing. Something that you could get in the store. You could put that on your list, and then instead of them buying that item, they make that item themselves, making it a little extra special. So there's right. that way. But when you have yeah. things like chocolate crackles or chocolate peanut butter chip cookies, mm. things that are really hard to find in the store, you know, they're not your standard cookie that you would find in the store, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't really put that on the wish list, right? So, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I just said the Amazon so, wish list. So, yes, is kind the of Amazon joke. wish list could work. To but it's very limited. You have to always be, you know. I feel like the Debbie Downer of this episode, by the way. I'm well, with sure. love, with love, and kind of getting back on topic, it's always an interesting sort of blend of things. Um, sometimes it's nice to get exactly what you wanted, to ask for something and get it. But sometimes it's also very nice to get something. Where it, it's from the heart, or someone who knows you and 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 um, picks something out for you that you know they know that you would enjoy, mm -hmm. um, and and it it it's something that they've thought about and you know considered your your relationship and what have you, and and, and they're like, okay, cool, like yes, you've sent me this Amazon wish list. We'll use this as a perfect example, and it has all these things on it. Um, let me um, take it a step further and maybe see if I can get something similar that maybe I make it, I can make myself or something I can, you know, decorate or what have you to bring and do for the sake of making you happy. Mm -hmm. So you ran it through your, your brain algorithm and decide, decided because they like this and this, they'll probably like this. There you go. I Thanks, mean, and that's kind of fair. I mean, my my boss did that recently. We we didn't officially do gifts for the holidays, but some of us gave each other things, mm -hmm. and they gave me a, a like these little bottles. One is garlic infused olive oil, mm -hmm. and the other one is a balsamic like vinegar. Mm -hmm. And they said, so they gave they they gave a story. They said. I th they they wanted me to know that they thought that I would like this and they were very hopeful that I would like it and I did and that kind of pleased them and they and I said what made you think of getting me these and they said because we had that potluck a couple months ago and you made that really good salad that everyone really liked and I realized that you'd like to make food like make a dish from scratch and so she's like I went shopping and I needed help because I wasn't sure what to get you and I'm listening to this and I'm like okay and I'm thinking this seems like an awful lot of effort. And then I was like, so you wouldn't buy this for yourself? And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I, <laughs> which I thought exactly. was kind of funny. And I was yeah. like, do you ever buy things to make a dish? And they're like, nope, don't cook. And I was like, blown away. Preach, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and I what I really. That, like, like how much of a commitment this was from them. To yeah. get me a right. gift because they they felt so compelled that they wanted to like honor something that I apparently enjoy and love by going to that level because that was not in their wheelhouse. Like, yeah. <laughs> so so not yeah. in my wheelhouse. What might be you know getting getting that third party person's input in something because you know hey they like this that's not my thing get some input from somebody else to to try to find the perfect gift. Yeah. You know, doing the research and and she obviously recognized this one aspect about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That she doesn't have and went to the the effort of actually trying to find something that you might enjoy. Well, and I think that's one of the key things about when you're going to 
if you're gonna like be affectionate to another person mm-hmm. is kind of cluing into what they enjoy what they like right. right so like anyone who's paid attention on the podcast especially this episode like it is going to be amorous with jeff fucking lay hands on him <laughs> like touch that boy please <laughs> <laughs> touch him <laughs> Um, consent is consent is the second. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, David wants Uh-oh. would love for you to do things for him. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I'm I'm yeah, I, I don't know. I I I feel like I I appreciate. That people take steps. I guess, like, I, I I, don't know. Maybe as I'm getting older, I'm mellowing on this. Like, as far as what people want to do for you and stuff like that. I just recognize that I think it's the intent, the thought, mm-hmm. that yeah. really has significance. Because sometimes I get things and I'm like, why did you get that for me? Like, and I even kind of understand why they got it. But I was like, I don't need it. That's not what I asked for. <laughs> but. Okay. So, Someone has to genuinely get to know you and know exactly like, 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 like I'm not going to prepare your taxes because <laughs> you want to do that. You want to, you want to, you want to <laughs> either do that yourself or fish it out for yourself. But maybe I can help you by doing this other thing. Um, I mean, I guess I, I look at it from this perspective. Um, Time spent together mm-hmm. is sort of more important to me than physical things. Um, and yet, like one of my one of my biggest uh, challenges, and I know this is probably why I haven't wanted to be in a relationship for quite some time now, is that I. I presume so much about another person's ability to to magically <laughs> know what I want <laughs> or to read my mind or whatever. <laughs> like, because that's what had to be said to me was, you know, someone I dated was like, you have these expectations. Like, you want, you you would like me to do these things and yet you never verbalize them. How am I supposed to know that's what you want? And there's a part of me that's like, I don't know. And then also it's like, but wouldn't, doesn't I don't think I'm that unique that I'm at, that I'm expecting certain things or wanting certain things that other people don't want as well. I don't know. It's definitely an area that I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, it goes back to communication, right? Yeah. Right. It's like they're saying, how do I know this is what you want if you don't somehow indicate to me? Right. right. Well, and the the, the conundrum that I've realized is that my personality is pretty um I don't know what the right word is. It's not I don't want to say it's aggressive and I don't want to say it's dominant. But it's definitive. Assertive. I don't know if I would necessarily see assertive. I just see it as like I mean in comparison to others it can absolutely be considered assertive. Um I just look at it as like matter of fact, like I just, mm. I do what needs to be done. I get the things that need to be done. I say the things that I f- feel compelled to say, like I don't really kind of filter or, or necessarily. Um, I mean, I do, if, if I'm in a certain environment, and I realize it's probably not the time that or part. the place. Mm-hmm. So, but I think people confuse that. Like some people that I've dated, they've, they've given me the impression that they think I'm like that all the time. And so, like, when I'm in, like, we're in the same space together, like, say, we're in my home or their home and, like, you know, we're sort of dating, I get the impression that they think that I'm just going to be as outspoken, I guess, Mm. just as, like, vocal or whatever. And that's actually not the truth at all. Like, like, I think there's a little bit of that, but I'm like, no, like, I, I think what I, the, the confusion the dynamic is like actually i wouldn't mind being taken care of that part and i was about to say that i feel like while you can be very 
out there in like public life when you are in private with someone that you care and love about you want to feel like you said feel taken care of you want someone to take care of you not to the sense of like paying your bills and all that shit but just like someone that can be reticent well I mean I mean okay <laughs> I'm like even Jeff's face is kind of like <laughs> what? no no I I understand I'm it's like I'm like it's... if you want to pay my bills like yeah as long right, as, right. as long as you're as long as your house is in order like if you're if your financial house is in order and you have enough expendable income and baby you want to pay my bills yeah yeah totally have at it <laughs> like, I would not mind a sugar daddy. Can you pay my bills? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> good to know. Let me amend my statement. I wouldn't mind a sugar daddy, or a sugar cub, or a sugar bear, or sugar smacks. Anyway, sorry, that's a that's an old throwback. Yeah, for I know what you mean. I, I, the I, youngins I, don't know what the hell I just said. Anyways, um, <laughs> man, do they exist anymore? All right, so Jeff falls down a rabbit hole. Yeah. So, yeah, but no. What I mean is, like, the the you want the op not opposite, but you want the opposite ish of what you have in like your like day to day. Right. I think like I, yeah, yeah. I think what I exhibit is mm -hmm. a sense of authority and an independence, um, kind kind of a strong will or a mm -hmm. very matter of factness. I don't know how all that gets described. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm floundering on the words, but the thing is, is like, but like if I'm not that way like i don't know like I, like my brain is a mess because like i love gestures of romance mm -hmm. so like holding the door open and right. like asking you know for this or whatever like and, and it's kind of and i find it problematic and here's why because it is it is programmed like we as a society have said like these are the things that that that's what a gentleman does right you know, a man like this is bad wording, but like it's it's an older reference, like a man takes care of a woman. So like he will do things for them, you know, hold the door open and, um, you know, it's chivalry, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's sort of like a, a thing that I sort of have an expectation of is like I I would like that. But to the point that was made to me, like, if yeah, if I don't express that, they don't know it. So. That's true, and that's sort of the case. Like, it, as we've kind of, you know, if you want to talk about like what we what relationships are about, like we have a whole bunch of series on landscapes or relationships. <laughs> you want to figure that part out? Like, just go through there and just look for stuff. But um, as you say, if you don't tell them, right, they don't know, and it is very hard to anticipate someone's needs because they, um. People aren't mind readers. I mean, there are some that can maybe anticipate things, but they don't read their mind all the time. Some people can get a guesstimate about what you want. Why am I so bright? Oh, that's why. Sorry, I'm just noticing there are these like lights on my shirt, and I'm real like it's probably coming from the windows because uh, it's bright out. But that being said, yeah. um, by the way, uh, side note. Um, Sugar Smacks still exists, but in the 1980s was renamed to Honey Smacks to downplay the sugar content. Oh. But wait, wasn't Sugar Smacks the one with the bear as the mascot? At one time, yes. Okay, and then it became Ribbit the Frog, right? Ribbit, Ribbit the Frog was something else. Yeah, uh, oh. Diggum Frog. Diggum Frog. Oh. So Diggum Frog actually was in the early 1970s, but then it was switched to Wally the Bear in 1986. That was after Honey Smacks. Bear, honey. Right. Mm. Oh. So wait, so the bear is the current mascot? I feel like then the in the 1980s, Diggum came back. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. That's it. Now I know. There was another cereal very similar to Honey Smacks. It was called okay. Golden Crisp. The Quaker yeah. has sugar puffs, like Muffet Meal has golden puffs, and, and Aldi yeah. has the Honey Wheat Puffs. 
Okay. I was sitting here like the 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 song from the bear when came like suddenly was popping my head and I was there was two words that kept missing and it was golden crisp. Oh sure. I Maybe think Golden the Crisp did again. the same thing as 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 Go- uh, Honey Smacks. Honey. Where, where the, Golden Crisp and Honey sugar, sugar Crisps and then they <sighs> Honey Crisp, Honey Honey Crisp. Shit, just combine all of it together. Um, <laughs> Golden Crisp is the post cereal. Honey Smacks is the Kellogg cereal. That's that's the the thing I re- was remembering now. That being said. Um, I apologize to our listening and viewing audience. This is the most random, like, all over the place episode we've had in quite some time. Tangential, like, just jumping off here and there. Um, (laughs) But, you know, um, yeah. So here's, here's, I was just, so I was going to ask this question. Um, Since the concept, the title of the show is The Love Bug, like, have, you ever been bitten by the love bug um and then did you get over it and by over it i mean like the concept the analogy or the imagery is like that you were bitten by the love bug which is kind of like being hit by cupid's arrow and you Uh became infatuated Uh and then that went away several times okay yeah yeah i mean there's a reason why i'm yeah um that's fair that's fair for me i mean i wouldn't call like jim and i like bit like infatuation because it's been 20 years but um well i was <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry i make no, no, no. you go back in time and remember yes. but i am remembering like before times the before four times before i was with jim mm-hmm. um i'm remembering a guy in college um, I was very much infatuated with and to like yeah like definitely I don't know if, if the well actually I probably do know I don't think the feelings were reciprocated fully but the um, the interest was there and um, every now and then like just now um, he will cross my mind, and I always wonder, like, I wonder where he's at right now. Hmm. Um, it was, a, it was a, um, he was, he was, he was a nice guy, very sweet person. Um, not the, no, he was cute. I think he was cute. You know, it was, it was college. Um, I think he was a year. I think he started a year after me, I think, if I'm remembering. It's been so long. Um, But he ended up having to leave school, and I can't remember why. But that was one of the reasons, like, um, it sort of fizzled out. Um, Not really. I would say that the was, like, I was very much interested. I will, this person is coming to mind. Um. And, but I do know that after we left, we did not keep in contact. Mm. So it happens. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think that that concept of like quickly, you know, becoming invested in another person. Um, and there is something to be said for the dynamic, like the difference between love and lust. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to look at that and say, it, especially in hindsight, to reflect and be like, oh yeah, I was, I was totally like infatuated. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, one of my, yeah, one of my very first boyfriends, which is amusing to me to, call, to say that we were boyfriends because I thought we were dating. They didn't necessarily think so. They just thought we were hooking up <laughs> and it's, and it is fair. Like looking back on it, I was like, yeah, we were in two totally different mindsets. Yeah. And but sometimes, we, I, yeah, go ahead. When I met them though, like, I think I've told the story before, like the whole world just stopped. Like there was something magical about meeting them. And like, mm-hmm. there was just these fireworks. And I was like, 
and it wasn't that like we met and instantly hooked up. We met at a meeting at a at a gay like uh, student kind of alliance thing in college. And I just never forget. I was just like, I just never met anybody that had like done that. And I was like, what the, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, like it was, it was a thing. Um, and there's been a couple times. It's not been the same like that ever since. But, you know, I've met people and been very uh, drawn to them. And. You know, I still feel that way with some people in, in my life now. I still think of them very fondly, um, affectionately, even though we haven't seen each other in some time. And, you know, I, I think the depth of the seriousness of, like, how much you f- fall in with them, I guess, is dependent on a lot of things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's natural to, like, kind of fall into that with someone. Although, uh, I will say this, I recently became sort of reacquainted unexpectedly with someone who I'd gone out on a date with a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, they had reached out on an app, wanted to meet up, wanted to meet up. And I was kind of like, well, isn't that, you know, and, and I was kind of hemming and hawing and then we did, we met up and we had dinner and I felt like, I just felt like it wasn't a thing. Mm. Uh, And looking back on it, like I wasn't exactly probably the best person and how I handled things like I just you know because then they wanted to go out again and they really enjoyed it and it just kind of wasn't my thing um and I didn't really hear from them or see them in quite a while and then they randomly like showed up at something recently and I was like I I was very awkward like, mm. I, I felt very uncomfortable and awkward because I was like because I know how things went and I was like oh yeah <laughs> You regret yourself sometimes, just saying. I know, uh, I know. It, like, it, I mean, it, and, and and they actually never said anything or whatever. So it was very, you know, it was very cool um, mm-hmm. that we, you know, it didn't become this big drama or anything. But it also wasn't the type of situation where I could like talk to them, you know, one on one or whatever. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. It was one of those things where I was like, "Yep, they probably think I'm a dick, <laughs> and they're entitled to it." Like, <laughs> you know. I mean, fair. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, no. If it sometimes that's the way it can be, and right. you can't stop someone else from having feelings about you. Um, right. You get just can't like like we've been talking about like these infatuations and what have you that we have where we've fallen for someone, whether it's like a quick red hot like moment or maybe a little bit longer and uh it's great and then it kind of fizzles out like that's when i think of like bit by the love bug that's sometimes what i think about Mm. it's because because of you know just getting kind of scientific and what have you the bite gets better like it cools off it always will heal as it were and then you go back to reality before everything before you were a bit like you have the bite mm. you get the love bite you get this real intense you know feeling for someone and if they've you know gotten bit by it too then cool like it you have this this interaction but at one point or another it's going to fade out now if there are really true affection and interest there then it has the potential to grow into something more, but doesn't always happen that way. Right. I mean, we can, we can, we can, I think, for, I think some of us can, can, can remember, recall, like tell any story we have about any bear run, bear event or whatever that we've been to, where we see the couple, that met that day, like met on like Wednesday or Thursday and are like glued together for most of the weekend. And then maybe by Sunday or, you know, depending on how long the event is, right. They've, they've they're maybe they're still together. Maybe they've had an argument um, or worse. Um, they broke up within two days. It's, it's, it, it happens. We've seen it. We see it all the time. We see it. We've seen it. 
That's fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a natural experience mm-hmm. to kind of fall, as we say, for a person to be really yeah. serious, really, you know, interested in them initially. Um, sometimes I think it's a little problematic. It because can be. I think, well, as I said, because I think people, you know, they they presume a lot. And they're like, oh, they sent me a message and blah, blah, blah. Like, they're really into me, you know, or whatever. And then it turns into this, like, whole, like, sip yeah. infatuation. Um, and the other person's oblivious because, like, yeah, they have no idea you've, like, already fantasized all these things, um, imagined all this stuff. And it's like, uh, yeah, it, it needs to be consensual. Um, mm-hmm. And between both of you, so to speak. Sensual? So, that's a question. <laughs> well, I well, say it like, like that because, I think, like, I think I think it's fine to like you know use your imagination to think about mm-hmm. like this other person and what what experiences can be like with them. Yeah, but there's yes. but there's a distinct a distinct difference in my mind between just like you know kind of like daydreaming ish mm-hmm. and being like oh my God, so like we're going to move in together and we're going to get married and we're going to like have pets and kids and like blah, blah, blah. We're going to do all the, you know, you know what I mean? Like to me, you're just like, okay, okay, calm down. Like you just, yeah. you just okay, marry. Because like, <laughs> because you, now you, one. You, you've known her for five seconds. Like seven. Right, right, right. It's like one, like there isn't necessarily consent happening and two, you are becoming delusional. Like <laughs> convince yourself, honey. Convince yourself. Yeah. The, the, and, you know, <laughs> have I been guilty of similar ish things? I would say so. I've met some I've met some people and, and been very interested and in, in invested and um, maybe to an extreme where. Um, uh, like, you know, thinking about future and what have you, which seems weird. Um, I will, oh, and I feel like that's a younger thing, I will think. I mean, I, I, as someone who has, I mean, I guess I probably, I've been in a relationship for a long time. Um, I don't necessarily see that happening now, but I do think building that potential future, even in your mind, is, can be, it can be. I don't want to say depressing. That's not the word I'm looking for. It can, it can, conv- it can, like you said, it's delusional. It can convince yourself of something that you don't even know is going to happen because you, ha- you, you haven't even engaged with this person yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, seeing someone in a, in a, in a, their profile and getting that just general information and seeing a lot of things that are aligning and be like, oh, like, like, like this could work. I feel like this could be something that could happen. And maybe having conversations with them and engaging them, not to a full point, but like if you've done a little bit of that and you're still in this like love blind, like everything's going to be so wonderful because I can't wait till we get anything like, like, no, I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen just yet. You got to like work it, work well, through it. I- I, I agree to an extent with you. Um, I think there is something about having that infatuation, that that basically dream, mm-hmm. that could put somebody into a position where they would make the step to attempt to get to that dream that right. they wouldn't otherwise. So, well, you may not hit that dream. It might be Hey, this is what I would like. Here's some things. We will we'll get a, a house in the suburbs with the white picket fence and two and a half dogs. I don't like saying kids. <laughs> it's fine. You know, you. And, and be just one happy couple. You make this step to start that relationship to get to that goal. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But if you realize, yes, this is like an ideal. This is a dream that I would like. I don't know if I'll get there. But let's try. Let's 
let's do it. I think that's that's relatively healthy. It's just you also have to have that realization that hey, I can have this dreams and everything, but I also have to look at what's real. Well, and and I think that's where I'm saying like there's a there's a, a line between like where I think it's healthy and then <laughs> to use the other version, the other end of that unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So like, and that's where I'm like, I think, you know, if you're, if you're bitten or shot with Cupid's arrow, whatever analogy you want to use that you, there is an infatuation period. It's just whether or not you get too deep into it, I guess. Yeah. Don't let the effect infatuation cloud your judgment. Don't let the infatuation taint your reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's coming. Um, Especially after you go after that taint. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, all of this, um, I think, is part of our perspective i know myself and at least one other co-host probably have the same perspective about when it comes to the upcoming holiday this week um it's not that important it's not that relevant and yet i remember someone i dated like made gestures because it was the the holiday Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and I appreciated it. And actually, I look back on it fondly and, you know, and it, and it brings a smile to my face to think about how they, you know, bought me a dozen roses and like did something nice, you know, and, and this and that. Um, but also there's a part of me that kind of struggles and, and is like, you didn't have to do that. I mean, true. So I, and that's where I feel like the balance that we find in our lives is, you know, accept the gifts however they may be you know don't be a, don't be a douchebag <laughs> and, and shoot down the gift thank you so um, much i love it mm. yeah i mean and that was the thing i think i said to them was you know like oh my god that's kind of unexpected thank you so much for that you didn't have to do that but it's appreciated um yeah so David, you're the one I'm not sure about. I don't know how you feel about like the the holiday and like the the aspects of it. It, it. Just for folks that are abroad, in America, the culture is very heavy on the commercialism side. Like, right. there's these expectations. There's flowers. There's cards. There's candy. There's like a dinner that you take your loved one out or a meal. Like, there's all this stuff. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Jewelry sometimes really, gets, gets involved. Really cheap candies in a heart shaped box. <laughs> You don't have to go that far. I just, I will. Um, I, it's okay. So he's upstairs and I'm just like, it's kind yeah, of, oh, it's really good. cheap candies in a heart shaped box that they sell for exorbitant prices. Why? Because that the United part. States is a capitalistic society. I don't care what you say. We're not democratic. We're capitalistic. That's <laughs> the way we use the United the, States. The, 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 so, oh gosh. Someone who is a, essentially approaching, I want to say, hmm, 2000, our first one. So we're looking at about 20 years of Valentine's, you know, coming up. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Mm-hmm. We've run the gamut. Um, we've done the hearts and, you know, the flowers and, can- well, not the flowers. I don't think we've ever done flowers. No, I don't think so. We've always done, we, we will usually do like the candy and the, you know, the, like, cause I love teddy bears, like the bears and stuffed animals and, and those kind of things and cards. We've done those things. We've done the dinners. We've gone out. Um, it's very casual, mm-hmm. I feel for us. You know, we express our love, you know, every, you know, days in different ways. Whether it's him telling me a joke that um, our dad joke that I have to roll my eyes at and be like, huh, ah, that's funny. Um, or, you know, 
every, all those other things. But to, you know, accurately saying I love you. Um, so Valentine's Day is sometimes just another day. Um, this Wednesday, since it's um, would have been, I would have had rehearsal. So we couldn't have done, like, gone to dinner. We couldn't have gone out to eat. It would have just been like, and we're preparing for, we're going to NAB weekend literally the following day. So um, this week would have, I probably, it probably would have been, oh, you know, maybe have said I love you and then maybe a card or something um, if we'd had time to get it, which we hadn't. Um, now that I don't have rehearsal because we canceled it because um, it's also Ash Wednesday, FYI. Um, mm. uh, uh, the as soon as I found out, I was like, "Oh, let me go see if maybe there's a place to go for dinner. Like maybe think about the dinner." And I looked online, and guess what? Because it's you know the weekend before, there's not a lot of thing open. Um, there's not a lot of reservations available for places. So I kind of nixed it. Um, I might look again on Monday, talk to him, see what we want to do, if we want to do anything. But it, reality is. For us, um, we don't need the commercialism. It's nice. I appreciate the gesture, don't get me wrong. And anything that he gave me or I gave him would be, you know, respected. I have, actually, I don't have much of them. I used to keep, um, like, the cards that he would give me and he, vice versa. We used to, used to put them on the mantle behind me as sort of, like, a way to show it and it just we just don't we just don't anymore right. not out of lack of affection or love for each other it just becomes not as important as having expression of love in different ways like we always do well i mean it's been 20 years it's like why reaffirm yeah. something you already knew yeah. Right. Uh, it's, it's, the honeymoon period is over. And I think, in a sense, <laughs> funny you mentioned Which that. Is um, <laughs> you know, we did just get married. So there is this, um, we've had, you know, many people ask, like, what are you doing honeymoon wise? And we were like, we don't know. We're taking our time. We, we like, we always do. It took us 20 years to get married. So um, <laughs> we're going to take so our in time. In 20 years, you'll take your honeymoon. No, it won't be that long. Um, actually, we might actually be doing something. We might be doing something this year, but I'm sure we have. Um, but again, it's it's a a. Jeff is kind of correct. We've been together twenty years. There's not really a reason to keep reaffirming it. Um, and I don't have. There's nothing wrong with those that want to, that want to make a special day. Like I might make a Facebook post. I might do something about that. I have done that in the past. Um, but that's about it. It's never been a, it's never been, an, it, it, it's nice to share the gesture, but it's not always, it's not required. That's the thing. I mean, mm. it's, it also sometimes it's just little things that yeah. make big, that make big impacts. So while well, some people would like a lavish dinner at a yeah. expensive rent restaurant or something big hullabaloo with balloons and and flowers and candy and all sorts of things if that floats your boat great but sometimes it's you just have a nice di candlelight dinner at home and it's something you probably would have made any time of the week yeah but it's just about being together in those moments exactly. and that's just those things yeah agreed well and i and i think that's a key thing like what you're talking about damon is like you know that length of time in a relationship things will change as you know the years go by and more importantly it's like you know you i think you find a rhythm and a thing about like what you want out of the relationship mm -hmm. and what you you know put into it or i guess or whatever so yeah i mean i i feel like I feel like our commercialism here in the U.S. 
pushes so hard on the whole, like, this is what being romantic is. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what a romantic gesture is. This is what, um, if you're not doing this, like, there's a judgment in it. It's so messy. Yeah. And I'm like, like please. <laughs> like, please. Like, my God, just give blowjobs, you know? Like, <laughs> don't, don't. Don't spend sixty dollars or a hundred dollars for a fucking pair, like a dozen roses or whatever. Like you know? I just did a quick refresh of my Facebook, and the first thing is an ad for Ethel M chocolates, which I I will admit I had looked at because of Facebook, and since I've looked at it, it now is in the algorithm. Um, right. And they're they're cute. Don't get me wrong, but um, the box they keep showing is sixty dollars. Um, Right, and my feeling on it is buy the Ethel, Ethel M chocolates, buy the C's candies, buy the buy the whatever your preference is. Just mm-hmm. don't buy it now. Like, don't buy it two weeks, three weeks before, or even maybe yeah. a week after. Like, just wait, yeah. and then buy it. <laughs> buy it on the fifteenth. It's not a holiday. Like, yeah, it's stock up, get bulk, whatever. Um, you I know, love, it, like. <laughs> so, like that's I think that's something. That's sometimes me and Jim, like after. Like Valentine's Day, like don't give me it then. Like wait till the day after, and or you know, like we'll go and go to Walgreens or something and um, pick up you know bags of candy and stuff because it's now on sale because it's after the holiday and we use it to stock our. We have a candy bowl on in our um, living room. We you know, mm-hmm. Jim has a uh, a bowl that he has upstairs in his office that he uses that he puts candy in every now and then. So like that's when I want to get it because bulk and get some stuff stuff um i don't i personally do not like the um like the cheap candy heart things because i like to know what i'm getting um because there are certain flavors that i despise um so if i'm going i have to go if i'm getting those i have to go to the point where you have the ones that have like what is in them like a list or a chart or whatever or um way to show it um, those are ones I prefer. Oh, Jeff's heart has worn three sizes this day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's like a half naked fat baby with wings behind him now. So that's sort of disturbing. <laughs> Anywho. But yeah. yeah, the, the, yes. But the, the idea being that, um, I don't again I don't like necessarily knowing what I'm getting. I like I like to know what I'm getting. I don't want so get me a thing of this um, is why gift cards are Kit Kats. So, so great. Yeah. Give me a thing of Kit Kats. Give me a thing of, of, of Reese Cups. Um if you're gonna get me the box heart of things, like did, did, let did it be Reese's, one flavor. Does Reese's Cups make the make it in heart shapes? Mm-hmm. There you mm-hmm. go. They do. Um, uh, which which probably has more peanut butter than the. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, or get me the um. I love Dove chocolate. I really do. I really love Dove chocolate. Like sometimes Dove will or Dove and um, um Ghirardelli and Lutz or Lunts. They usually make for Valentine's Day. They make a special flavor, you know, just for the the holiday those i can like because they're usually limited edition or they don't come around except for around this time um although i think the truffles lunch meat there was a um strawberries and cream i wasn't the biggest fan of those they were a little hmm. they became a little coy like a little too sweet anyway that being said reese's peanut butter pink cream snack size heart Mm-hmm. We have white cream peanut butter hearts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are just the, the wrapper for the miniatures are just colored. Yeah. Yeah, some of the, like, sometimes it's just the same thing in, like, a pretty wrapper. Like, Kit Kats usually has a, just, it's just a fun wrapper. Like, I love But, the, but like, they, they, do, they do have heart shape. Mm, 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 they have some mm, elongated mm. ones, and then they have some that are regular size. Mm. <sighs> well, with that being said, yeah. 
Is there anything else? Uh, you know what? I think that's uh, the show about love. Dun, 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 dun. My heart is black again. <laughs> I have to do it for two cameras one, one to show, show my fellow hosts and one to show the audience in any case playways contact us uh, let us know about your love bug experiences and what you think of love uh, uh, this, uh, this is also single awareness week so tell us how much how hard, how black your heart is are you with me or are you with these two? <laughs> uh, you can do that in several ways, such as popping over to our website, comesoutloud.com. She can uh, leave me a comment or blog. Choose an email, it comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 361 Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, slash X. Uh, and YouTube at comes out loud the appropriate place of the URL on YouTube, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, helps us a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to chat us up directly, you can do that on Telegram at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can also find out when we're planning recording these shows and what the topics may be. Get a little preview on that. By following our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You also get various accoutrements, such as uh, various styles of the Cubs Out Loud logo, such as my four-plate shirt, made-to-be shirt, and various other mer pieces of merchandise, mugs, at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of the designs were designed by Smashy, such as the consent is my four-plate. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash mashy the bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. Please like us, rate us, and review us on the various podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box, puppy box, cup box, something or other. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79 on most beer related sites or on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. No, Twitter is not safe for work. You can find me as Pup Umbra79 on Blue Sky. That Blue Sky is not safe for work. For the safe for work one, you want DMA Gamer79 on Facebook, or not Facebook, uh, Twitter, or TikTok. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. Know that? Say good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Bye.